It really doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. Everybody has had that one thing that scared the living daylight out of them when they were a kid. Like for some people it may have been clowns, for other people it could have been those early looking Easter bunny suits, I don't know why that was a thing. And for other people it might have been this annoying piece of sh**. Well, if you are from the Netherlands and was born in the early to mid 90s, it is very likely that your dreams have been haunted at some point by one very specific fictional character. And he goes by the name of Carbonkel. Hey. Welcome back my dear friends and foes. Today I want to explore with you this little weird cultural phenomenon. You see, I myself have had a terrible, terrible nightmares about this distinguished looking gentleman. And as I grew up, it almost seemed as if everybody from my generation has had this weird shared horror experience growing up as a kid. But how did this came to be? And why did this came to be? And who the hell was responsible for all this? Well, let's find that out. So back in ancient times, when I was still a little snothead, we had these school TV shows. You know, like the ones you'd watch in class and supposedly had some kind of educational value. And I'm not gonna lie, some of those were uh, kind of weird. Gaat het, Mof? Nee. Oh, maar wat is er dan? Ja, ik, ik moet poepen, maar het lukt niet. But nothing in the school TV catalog really topped the weirdness that was Ik, Mick, Loreland. Ik Mick Loreland was basically some kind of fairy tale like show where the main character called Mick was supposed to save a fantasy realm called Loreland. It kinda adds up, you see? But why did Loreland need rescuing? Well, that's where the subject of today's video comes in. You know, Carbuncle. You see, Carbuncle couldn't read or write. Ik. Ben. Carbuncle. And seeing others do that very thing that he could not made him so angry, made him so jealous that he had to take actions into his own hands. He decided it was time for some sweet, sweet vengeance. And what better way to get back at all those pesky little bookworms than to steal their letters. No, no, not the letters you put in an envelope like the actual letters of the alphabet, which you could also technically put in an envelope, but you, you get the point. You must geduld hebben. Carbonkels kunnen niet lezen en schrijven. Ze hebben ook geen geduld. Ze kunnen wel gemeen doen en dwars zitten en plagen. Ze kunnen schrijfletters wegmaken en boekletters allemaal. En dan kan jij ook niet meer lezen en schrijven. Niemand meer. <laughs> Carbonko went out of his way to destroy the letters of the alphabet. And that's where the main protagonist Mick steps in to recover the letters and learn how to read and write in the process. It's a silly little plotline based around teaching kids how to read and write. So subsequently the show was targeted at six year olds who by then were starting how to read and write their first little words and then proceeded to bet their wets in their carbonkel infused nightmares. He did to bet their words, to bet their words, to bet their words. Are you soft in the head? But what is it exactly that makes him so scary? Well, elephant in the room, start off with the looks. He is one ugly ass motherfucker. I mean, he's literally named after a cluster of infected boils. He got the lumpy face, the straw like hair, and the creepy eye to top it off. I mean, the way the puppet was designed doesn't really line up with the six-year-old demographic in my head, like from my perspective. But yeah, let's hear what the creator had to say about it all. <laughs> nou ja, dat was de, de, de bad guy in de serie en uh, daar mo dat moest echt wel wat zijn. Dus toen dacht ik, nou oké, okay, dan, uh, dan leef ik me daar lekker op uit. Maar uh, kijk, die pop, die was nooit zo eng geworden als Simon, want dat is gewoon een hele goede poppenspeler. Als die hem niet zo goed uh, bediend had. I find it really funny how she acknowledges that the puppet got really, really scary and then proceeds to try and put all the trauma on the puppeteer. <laughs> yes, I made it very, very scary, but it's not my fault that kids got scared. Like, <laughs> what? 
but she wasn't completely off the mark. It wasn't just the aesthetics that made Carbuncle creepy, although it really fucking helped. It was also the voice and the mannerisms and just the way he moved throughout the scenes that really sold the entire package of him being this this ugly weird monstrosity i mean it's so creepy like even to this day it still creeps me out just listen to this dude the funny thing is he really didn't do or say anything really terrible like he really did only say stuff like i'm gonna hinder you and i'm gonna antagonize you and stop you from completing your quest and blah 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 it's it really innocent actually but the whole demeanor the overall vibe was just so goddamn creepy that it didn't matter anymore like he could have said the nicest things in the world he would still be this creepy little crackhead and it wasn't just the aesthetics and the way he moved it was the entire thing that carbonco was not only was he just ugly he was able to do some weird magic tricks being able to transform himself into a fish or an old lady or whatever the hell this is supposed to be that was another aspect that made him scary i for one vividly remember a dream where fish farm carbuncle would pop up out of the toilet to set his filthy teeth in my dingleberry plantation it terrified me as a kid and i personally found fish farm carbuncle just as scary as crackhead carbuncle <laughs> It seemed like the producers of the show really went out of their way to make Carbuncle as scary as possible, but within this weird set of boundaries of this school TV show. But why? Like, didn't the creators have an, any inkling that Carbuncle would be straight up nightmare fuel? Like, was it basic ignorance? Or was it intended to make as many children cry as possible? Or was it an artistic metaphor of what kind of nightmare the Dutch language actually can be when trying to navigate it? Well, to sum up in their own words... Basically, several young artists worked together on the show and nobody ever thought of it as too scary initially. It seemed as if they got a bit too overexcited uh, with their creative expressions here. And to be fair, I can see that I can see that when you're all set up in this creative process, you, you get overwhelmed by all the hype and you think, oh, it can get a bit scarier here and a bit scarier here. And then suddenly, Kabongo. I mean, it's not just me that had this experience, nor just me and my close circle. It was literally a nationwide phenomenon. The majority of an entire generation of kids in this country has had some kind of experience with this freak show and for a lot of them it wasn't a good one <laughs> if you talk to them most of them would probably say something along the lines of carbuncle <laughs> this is not okay eng event i poop three days in my broek letterlijk i poop the whole ground under the juffrouw had me gewoon the juffrouw was echt die hoe gaan we dit oplossen poop overal onder alle kinderen op de tv uh. Uh, ja, ik heb daar uh, vier jaar lang voor in therapie gezeten. Het was een nachtmerrie voor iedereen. De juffrouw gooide me uit de klas. Ik bleef me doorpoepen, man. But in all honesty, Kabonko and by extension the show, Ik Mik Logeland, was actually a great success. Yes, he was scary as hell. And yes, kids did get nightmares. But that's what made the show extremely exciting for kids. Kabonko was made to be the bad guy. And boy, did he deliver. And it's probably due to Carbonco's infamy that to this day nearly everybody in this country that was born in the 90s still vividly remembers this show. It was the nightmare and the trauma that made this show an instant cult classic. And even back when it first aired, a lot of kids were actually really invested in this silly story of stolen letters and learning to read and write your first words. This sort of brief I got allemaal from kinderen die net konden schrijven. Nou, dat vind ik echt... Ja, maar ik krijg ook nu brieven van grote meneeren en die zeggen... Uh, u bent Mick, ik was altijd verliefd op u. Kabonkel is a core memory for everybody in this generation. It's a part of the culture, it's a part of 
recent history, especially in media and education here, and proof that Carbuncle still lives rent-free in all of our minds is that it even got to the point that last year the NPO, a Dutch public broadcasting corporation, made a satire documentary at... Documentary? Documentary. Documentary. Documentary made a satire documentary and tailing Carbuncle's life behind the scenes, describing his drug and alcohol abuse and whatnot's happening after all the backlash. And yeah, it's kinda wacky. But I think it's a good metaphor for how you look at Carbuncle when you grow up. Because as a kid you only see this homeless one-eyed wizard that just tries to thwart the plans of the protagonist. But as you grow up you actually see that Carbuncle was actually really sad. He wanted in on all the fun of the reading and writing, but couldn't do so because he was illiterate. And that drove him to do the things that he did. He hated the letters because he couldn't understand them. Actually showing what happens when you ostracize people. And in the process of doing so, actually giving this freaky looking puppet a lot more depth than many other antagonists in modern media. And in retrospect, despite having a lot of nightmares about Carbuncle, I actually look back upon it quite fondly. It's this weird, silly, shared memory we have with <laughs> this entire generation. He was a staple of many primary school memories, good or bad ones, <laughs> that's up for debate. But I think that most people nowadays just see him as this silly little bit of nostalgia. Now eventually Carbonco got replaced after the first season of airing due to complaints from concerned parents, I wonder why. And from then on he would go on forward looking like this. Which is still pretty fucking creepy if you ask me, but I guess it's a little bit less scary. But yeah, that's the story about how a young and overzealous production team created the most infamous and memorable characters in Dutch school TV history. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, well, if you did, maybe consider subscribing. That made me go... Mm. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching.